Hey Penny, um, Lester says that uh, says that he's kind of back, moved back to his normal position, and that Alo has sort of uh, resumed his uh, uh, his normal position at the one. Does that will that bring about any changes to how the starting lineup looks? Um, you know, we've been doing a lot of mix ups while this um, this little wait, this holding and wait has been going on, and it just so happened that Lester and Alo have been on the same team a lot. The data is going to get mixed up, uh, and Alex was running the point with him being with Lester. But I'm I'm just looking for the, the top five guys that really wanted the most to be out there on the on the floor, and we really haven't decided which five we're going to go with. It's just that's been the matchup that Lester's been with. Maybe he thinks that's the matchup because he's been a starter, but we're mixing it up again today. So if you talk to him tomorrow, he'll have another lineup. Danielle. Penny, when these postponements happen, like when you get word, what's kind of going through your head? What's the next move? Are you immediately just setting the practice schedule again? Or are you, you know, reaching out to, to other teams and possibly looking to schedule a makeup game? Like how does that all unfold? Well, for us, uh, <clears throat> it comes from our athletic office because the AD reaches out to our AD. And then from there, we're trying to rearrange that game or restructure, reschedule that game. Uh, but also, I'm looking for other games uh, that we could possibly play out of conference uh, to try to do that. I mean, we just need games. It'll be a month before we play the game, pretty much. And uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, at Tulsa this Sunday. Cassie? Honey, what's the overall feeling just with each postponement from the coach's perspective? And do you feel like something needs to change in order for this season to progress? In the beginning, uh, we kind of understood it because it was like, this can happen, but this is the first time that it's happened, you know, multiple times. So three times in a row, the beginning was, okay, we understand. At UCF, we had kind of had some Romans that when they went to Tulane, that they had somebody that tested positive. So it was kind of a question mark on that one. This one came out of nowhere, so it's been it's disappointment today, and um, uh, we understand that this is we're in a pandemic and this is happening, and uh, this is what you have to ride with. But we just didn't think that it was going to you know be three games in a row. It's, I mean, I'm happy that we're still having a season, but I don't really know what the answer is besides what we're doing. You have to get in a bubble and you have to stay in a bubble, and until the season is over, you can't be venturing out family parties, all these different things that people could do that could possibly gather from, you know, around a family member. You have to just cut this short while the season is going on. Clayton? Hey, Penny. Um, just, you know, I, I know we mentioned last week the possibility of, of trying to figure out if, you know, a conference game was possible. Is it is it all the more frustrating now that this game isn't happening, that it feels like lost time when you have such little, you know, with windows coming up to make up now? Uh, two additional games? Well, being in the okay. paper, we kind of understood that it could happen. So it gets disappointing, but you're like, okay, this is a part of what we're trying to – we're trying to play through a pandemic instead of just shutting the season down. So, you know, it's not the worst the worst thing because the season could end again like it did last year. So we have got to be mindful that, you know, we have to continue to be safe, wear our masks, wash our hands, and things of that nature. And, you know, it's just unfortunate that it happened to UCF, Temple, and, uh, and SMU. But it's just – it's a part of it, man, that you just have to kind of work through the rigors of, of what's happening. Is there – and just to follow up, is there – I asked Lester, is there kind of the silver lining there? I know we – you know, we talked about different issues trying to work out. It's tougher to do that during a season. But, you know, basically getting a mini off season here to, to fix a lot of issues, do you feel like that's – you know, if there's a silver lining out of it, that that's, that's something that was accomplished? For us, yes, because DeAndre Williams still didn't – he wasn't – the chemistry still didn't really know the plays. Uh, and then we switched up the offense. So this time has been much needed for us to kind of lay the groundwork and, and, and go through every option and, and do what we need to do. So we're much better in that aspect and the defensive end as well. So it, it was the timing was if it was time and we needed it now for it to happen uh, so that, you know, we can we can kind of get stronger as a team. Terry. Hey, what's up, coach? Uh, how you doing? Terry. I'm good. Um, you have a bunch of socially conscious players, man. Have you had any conversation with them about the events that happened last Wednesday on Capitol Hill? You know what? Uh, obviously, you know, we know what happened, but the team really hasn't talked to me about it openly, maybe in the locker room, and I haven't asked questions about it. Um, 
they've seen teams around the country kneel, college teams. They've seen uh, people react to what happened. They're showing the videos of what's happening. And it's, it's I can only imagine being 18 to 23 witnessing this in, in, in 2021 and uh, adults uh, storming the Capitol, the nation's Capitol and, and the Capitol building, whatever. It's just, it's, it's amazing. But I haven't talked to them about it. And, uh, you know, maybe they're talking to themselves, you know, amongst themselves about it. Clayton? Coach, just um, in this time off, I was just wondering, can you give us maybe an idea of, like, how much of practice time has been focused on game prep for games that haven't happened and how much of it has been kind of focused on on working on your guys' self and, you know, um, making adjustments that, that you wanted to, that you were referring to before? Yeah, honestly – we, we started working on the team after like, after we finished South Florida, we started working on Temple. And as soon as we found out the Temple wasn't going to gonna happen, then we went right to UCF and started working on UCF because every coach has a scout. They're already working on the scout before they actually get to the game. And then we worked on SMU, and now SMU is canceled, and now we moved to the next coach for uh, Tulsa. And um, it's just, you know, it's, it's weird actually going through it, but we understand uh, and what was the second half of that question? I'm sorry. Just was wondering that so much spent with the team in practice on preparing for an opponent that you don't face. Has there been like as much time as maybe we might perceive like to actually focus on yourselves rather than, you know, uh, scout for another team? And, you know, we, we really focus on ourselves a lot. We give the, the scout of the other team, you know, a film session, a couple of film sessions, then we'll go through their plays at the end. But the majority we're really working on ourselves. And, and luckily for us, the next game is a team that we've already played. So we have film of that team, of that game. And, you know, the, the scout will be much easier because it seemed like it was yesterday when we played them here. And uh, the guy, that'll be fresh on the guy's mind. Danielle? With all of these postponements, not just in this league, but around the country, and like you mentioned, you know, all you can really do is take care of, of your squad and, you know, have everyone stay as safe as possible. But sometimes it seems like that's not enough. Like we're coming up on, you know, possible conference tournaments, NCAA tournament. Um, don't really know how that's all going to go down. Like, do you have any opinions on, you know, if college basketball as a whole should kind of change how we're doing things going forward? Uh, I mean, first let me say, I, I definitely sympathize with all those teams because no one's trying to get COVID. No one's trying to go outside of their bubble. It could just happen with a, like a, a mother or father coming to visit. It's just so, so it's, 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 a, it's a fine line. Uh, it's not like you're out at a bar or at a nightclub or doing it. You just, it's just, it's amazing how all of this is uh, actually happening. But for us, I think that, um, that the things that, that happened in South Dakota, I think the way that they had it, I think that was just pretty solid. When you get in a hotel and then you're just in that hotel, you can only leave to go to practice, come back. You can leave and go to your team room to, to eat or watch film and then come back. I think the NBA is actually changing that with the NBA players where they can only be at home now and not be able to go out. Once they go home, you go, you leave, you go into practice, you go into the facility for a game and then you're back home. So I don't know how that's gonna work, but for us, it's, it's just got to be, man, hey, just be careful and, you know, wash your hands and, and just try to stay in the bubble as much as possible. And then when you get to the NCAA tournament or, or a conference tournament, it's easier to get everyone in a hotel, test every day that morning, and keep everybody. If you're leaving your room, you're going right to your, your team room for dinner, lunch, breakfast, watch film, and then right back to your room. And that worked really well in South Dakota. Terry, last question. Hey, Coach, uh, we know what happened last time you guys went down to Tulsa. Are you going to show them their film or since the message didn't sink in last time or how you put the sense of urgency on how important it is to play well on Sunday? Well, I think our guys understand that we can't take anybody for granted in this league. I think our freshmen did last year. That's why we got smashed. Had a team that played with a chip on their shoulders and, and really beat us up. Coming here this year, no Malcolm and no Alo, it really hurt. It really hurt our rotation and the guys that played in the game, we just didn't play good enough or and now after losing that game, it kind of struck a nerve for the guys. Even though the South Florida game kind of got a hand for a minute, we kind of gathered ourselves and won that game. So that's the momentum we're going to go off of. But it is tough to win because as soon as Tulsa left us, they're going to like a five-game win streak or a four-game win streak. That zone is tough. Those guys play hard. They play together. They're veteran players, uh, an older team uh, that really want to win. And um, 
you got to go down there with the right mindset. And I think with this, with that adversity that hit us the first time that we lost to them, the first conference game, guys are locked in now understanding what we really have to do. All right. Thanks, coach. Thank you.